Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 976. Hey, if you want to download this workbook 976 to 977, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we have a sort of silly video, uh, but there's a couple cool things in it. I want to show you 10 different ways to do a two-way lookup. Now, we need to look up this particular ID and be able to switch it to whichever one we want, and then extract first name, last name, hire date, and salary. And here's our uh, database. Now VLOOKUP, no, we don't usually think of VLOOKUP as being able to do a two-way lookup. But I'm going to look up that and hit the F4 key to lock the column reference, comma, and then the table, control shift down arrow, and then F4, comma. And I'm going to say type a 2 here, because the first, second column has the thing I want, and then comma 0, because I'm looking up a text item and it's not sorted. All right, That's not two-way lookup. That's just VLOOKUP. But really, it is a two-way lookup. You're looking up this, it's finding the row, and then you're explicitly telling it which column in the data set. So we really want second column, uh, this item here, so it looks there, there, and gets that. First right? name three. And I'm actually going to highlight all the cells, hit F2, and Control Enter. I don't mess up the formatting, and I have formatting there. But now, what do I have to do? This is the long way. I have to manually go in and change each one column to four. January 11, 2010. I better turn that off. Turned off. Speak on Enter. And then I'm going to change this to 4. So when those of us who use VLOOKUP all the time and use this method of typing in, very common. But no one thinks of it as a two-way lookup, but it is. Well, OK, so we can amend that. Let's say we put our column numbers above. Then we don't have to hard coding each one in. Control Enter, I'm going to do the same trick. F2 and then Control Enter, because it's got date and uh, currency format. If I copy this over, it'll take that text format and, or no, it's not text, it's general and copy it over. All right, well, we could take that um, one step further. I'm going to Control V, and instead of using this or a column up here, I could use the match function. Now, the match function is great because it'll look up an item, comma, within a particular range. And notice this VLOOKUP table has one, two, three, four, five, so I'm going to highlight all five hit the F4 key, comma, and I'm going to say exact match because it's not sorted and field names are never, almost never sorted. So I actually put the match right into the column index. Match will look up first name and tell you the relative position of the item in the list, which is 2. And then when it copies over and looks up last name, last name will be 3. Control Enter. So that's another way. Still another way you could do the old standard, I mean, the index function is specifically made for doing two-way lookups. But when you use index, you actually have to highlight just the data you're looking up. Unlike VLOOKUP, you don't highlight the first column. That's called the array, comma. Then you do row number. Well, I need a row number, so I'm going to do match. And I'm going to look up that, and I'm going to lock the column, but not the row, comma, within this range here. Now, really, I kind of like the VLOOKUP match in this case. But the index match combination for two-way lookup ultimately has uh, more options. There's more different lookup situations you can do with the index match combination. Now, I'm going to F4, comma, 0. That'll give me the row number, and that match will deliver the row number to that argument for index. But comma, I need to do another uh, lookup for the column. right? So now I'm going to look up that relative cell reference, comma. And be careful. This is the index. The index only has these four columns, so I'm only highlighting these four. F4, comma, 0, close parentheses. So two matches inside the index. Control Enter. I'm going to highlight, hit F2, Control, Enter to enter those in. Oh, that didn't work. What happened there? Oh, I forgot to lock the table. See, you, the, my rule is, is if I enter a formula into a range and it didn't work, I go to the last one in F2 to put in edit mode and then look at the color coding rainbow uh, range finder. And I can see that I missed a cell reference. So I'm going to come back here. 
uh, highlighting all the cells, F2, and then I'm going to highlight just that little colon and hit the F4 key to lock both of those. Now when I control enter, I can take my edited formula and re-enter it. All right, um, still another way, and these last two methods require that the order of the field names are, are the same here as up here, and they're in sequence, right? Um, all of these, if we change this up here, I mean, if we did it the manual way, we just, if we change this to higher date, we'd have to change this to 4. But all of these basically are not really dependent on the order of this. But these two will be. We could do copy this and edit mode, control V. And instead of using this, I can use a number increment, or I need a 2 and then a 3 and a 4 and a 5. So I can use the columns function. Actually, let me do all of them, F2. If only I could type columns. Now, what is columns? You give it a range, and I'm going to give it C7. Actually, dollar sign C7, colon C7. Now, columns ask the question, how many columns are there in a particular range? Well, C to C. There's only one, and I need to start with the number two, so I'm going to plus one. But notice, this is locked. This is not an expandable range, so the C will turn to D, which will then give us two, then three, then four. Control Enter, and there you have it. You can see that the columns, C7 to E7, that range is expanding. Now, the thing about columns and then the plus one is the actual formula element delivering the number is contained in the cells with the formula. So it's never going to be at risk of uh, you know, having some reference out here where we delete it and then it messes up the formula, because the only time it'll be deleted is if the formula is deleted. All right, and then one, I love this method here. I'm going to use index and match. And this is my, one of my favorite movies uh, methods here. The array, well, what am I looking up? I'm simply going to highlight that range right there. Now, that's the lookup range. Those are the values we're looking up, but, but I'm going to leave it as a relative cell reference. So as I copy over, the range that I'm looking up moves perfectly, comma. right? These two methods, they have to be in the exact same order to so see that cell, relative cell reference. When I move over to the second column, it's going to be looking at the second column down here. Now I just do match, and I'm looking up that. One, two, three, lock the column, comma, within, I'm sorry. So the I, what I'm doing right here, I got confused there a second. I'm looking for the row number, not the column. right? So these are parallel in size to these. So I'm going to uh, put those there and lock it. And then highlight the center and hit F4. Right? So it's looking up that within there. So it'll give me the row number, comma, 0, close parentheses, in essence, and then close parentheses. In essence, we're avoiding having to do that column lookup at all because we put a relative cell reference here. right? But again, it's dependent on that this is the same order as the table. Control Enter, and hit F2 and Control Enter. All right. Now, these are all not sorted. We had to do exact match. right? Now, the exact match for the field names is pretty much always going to be exact match. Um, and that formula is pretty good right there. I love that. But for these VLOOKUPs, we always had to do zeros. right? And for the two-way with match match, we had to do zeros both ways. If we could sort this, it would give us a faster calculating formula. Now, for a small data set, it doesn't matter. But for large data sets, it does matter. Now, I, what I've done down here is I've sorted this first column. Now, I'm not going to redo these. But we can amend this one, right? V lookup, looking up that, and the match to look up the column. But um, the match, again, is going to have to do an exact match. If I click right there, so it says match match type is exact match 0. But in the VLOOKUP, comma, I didn't put that because the default is approximate match. So if you leave it out, it'll do approximate match, which requires that the first column is sorted. And if for large data sets, it's significantly faster. All right. And then here. Index match match. I only get to um, do 
the default. Notice, again, it's the same as if you look up a comma. If you don't put match type in, the default is approximate match, which means this has to be sorted, a sorted column here, and it calculates much more quickly. Um, but okay, again, the field names are going to have to be exact. Uh, and then we could do this one right here. I love this one. So in essence, the relative cell reference there is looking up the column, right? But the match here, because it's sorted, I don't have to put that zero. And finally, this is an amazing one. I actually learned this from Mr. Excel. You've got to be kidding. The lookup function. Now, the lookup function, if I give it this value here, and then I'm going to uh, lock the column reference, comma, Lookup only does approximate match, so this column has to be sorted, right? And what does lookup do? Lookup, if I highlight this here, and lock the first one, the column, but not the second one, this will be an expandable range. Now, this isn't a particularly good function because lookup sometimes does. Um, vertical, sometimes horizontal. But for our particular data set here, it's going to work fine. Because lookup is programmed to always take from the last column, no matter what. Notice it's not like VLOOKUP, which asks which of the columns you want to retrieve the item from. So as we copy this formula over, this orange range will expand and always properly get the last item from the column, right? So now I can close parentheses, control enter. Actually, I should see this whole time I've been using control enter because if I copy it over like this, then it takes the formatting from there and replaces it. But no problem, there's a smart tag. I say fill without formatting. No, I said format only. I meant fill uh, without formatting. And there it is. You can see that expandable range. Now, the rule for when you can get away with lookup is if the table is taller than it is wide, it does VLOOKUP in essence. It treats it as a vertical table. If it's wider than it's tall, then it does HLOOKUP. All right, that's like this antiquated function. But in this particular case, it's taller than it's wide. So that is just crazy. It's doing a two-way lookup with an expandable range there. All right, so uh, that's a pretty groovy formula there. That's pretty groovy. But you know, the one I, I like these two, but the one I uh, teach often in classes uh, is this one. It just You can't go wrong with this. It's uh, looking up this first item, and the match is robust because this can be in any order. If I were to change this to salary, right, instantly the ones with match update. Now, you know, I, I said I was going to do two methods here. Uh, and I like the methods that some of the formula methods, uh, like I just mentioned that one and a few others, great formula methods. But there is another method. And I don't really use this method myself, but it is, you know, since this is an epic video about all the ways to do two way, or all the ways I can think of to do two way lookup, I got to show you the space operator. Now let's just pretend for a second. Here I'm looking up that particular record and last name. What if I could do this? And then space and then this. That space there tells this formula to look at the intersection between these two. And because there is an intersection, it does not give us a null, it gives us the actual answer. If you were to do this with ranges that have no, there's the space operator, has no intersection, you'd get the null, because there's nothing there, no intersection. All right, but obviously that would be silly to highlight in all the columns. But you can use define names and uh, the indirect function to do this kind of two-way lookup. Now I'm going to quickly name this column first name, this column last name. This record, uh, whatever this employee ID is, by highlighting this whole range. And you could go to, for, I'm in 2013, but this works in uh, other versions too. Create from selection. I'm going to use the, the keyboard, Control-Shift-F3. 
And what it will do is ask the top row. That means it will name this employee, this one first. But it will also take from the left. This, this row, first name, last name, et cetera, will be named that, and et cetera. So I click OK. And all of a sudden, I have a huge list of names here. Now, there is one complication. We have a dash here. So let's go ahead and try it. Now, if I were to highlight this range here equals this range here, space, and then this range, it'll put the names in for me, right? But notice what? There is an underscore. There's the space, so it'll work. But that's the official name given because that character wasn't allowed. So we're going to have to do something trickier because the indirect function can take that text, which is text, and since it represents a reference, it can convert it to a reference. Let's just do the first name, indirect. Indirect's only purpose is to take text that represents a reference and convert it to that reference. So if I highlight this and hit the F9 key, sure enough, it's getting the first names. Right? So the only trick is, if I do the second indirect and highlight this and then space, that will not give us a, the right reference because that's not the exact text. So watch this. If I hit F9, it goes, what? Reference. That's not a reference. No problem. We need to substitute. We need to use the substitute function. And there's the text comma, the old text is any time it's double quotes, dash, double quotes. It's just the dash. You have to put the text in double quotes, comma, and the new text. Well, what did the create names from selection give us? It gave us underscore. So double quote, underscore, double quote, and then close parentheses. Now, let's just check this out. Just the substitute on the inside. If I hit the F9, you can see, ooh, there it is, exactly what I need for the define name, Control-Z. And then I'm going to highlight the indirect, F9, boom, it got exactly that uh, record right there, All right? Control-Z. And now we have a proper reference here, a space and a proper reference there. So Control-Enter, and when I copy it over, I forgot to lock. Notice we did our trick. We go, you go to the end, you see where the references are, what cell references are. They're all wrong. So now I'm going to do uh, F4 key one, two, three times. All right, because that's relative. That's locked on the column. Control Enter and then copy it over. All right, and then I'm going to point to, and I think I've already ruined the formatting. So I'm going to highlight here, go to the home, the paintbrush. Go like that. All right, so that is using uh, define names and uh, the space intersector and the indirect and substitute. That's that's pretty silly. Uh, obviously, some of these ones up here are uh, quite a bit easier to do. All right, we'll see you next trick.